8 o'clock on Local 3. Big smiles <laughs> from quarterback Russell Wilson and his agent after a major NFL trade to bring the superstar to Denver. I think this, without a doubt, is the biggest trade since Manning. We have new reaction from Broncos country overnight and a look at how the high caliber quarterback changed the season outlook for the team already. Plus, it's a Denver 7 weather action day. Snow is starting to come down in bigger flakes right here in Denver. We have team coverage today, and we'll start with Katie LaSalle here in a moment. But you know what? I want to tell you, I was just checking the weather mm. in Seattle this oh, yeah? morning. Yeah. It's cloudy and wow. rainy for the next Most week. Most of the year, right? Yes. So, <laughs> Russell Wilson, welcome to Denver. Welcome back. And, uh, yeah, we like the weather here. Yeah, we'll give you a little <laughs> taste of snow, but sunshine we know is coming, right, yeah, Katie? 300 days on average. I lived in the Pacific Northwest. I would take Colorado any day with our changing weather like we're seeing this time in March. It is snowing, though, and it is a Denver 7 weather action day with some whiteout conditions over higher terrain with areas of blowing snow up near Rabbit Ears Pass in and around northern Colorado. We've seen snow falling this morning. A live look from UNC there in Greeley where snow is sticking to the roadways and the sidewalks and in the grassy areas and we are starting that to see that impact the metro area so be careful on the roadways it will stay very cold today it's a big blast of arctic air with this cold front temperatures right now in the upper teens feels like we're just in the single digits and you can see that widespread snow impacting northern colorado portions of the metro area heavier right now near broomfield into thornton and commerce city still light to moderate snowfall down south but it will start to filter in as we go through this afternoon jason we have winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings posted through tomorrow well, we have a traffic warning right now. We have slick roadways, especially in northern Colorado. We've had multiple crashes. This is I-25, the northbound side from Harmony, trying to get up to Prospect. They actually are diverting traffic into the uh, way station there to get around a bunch of crashes that we've had up there. We have had crashes down by Highway 34, and I-25 is over by Johnson's Corner, and you can see the slick conditions we're dealing with outside of Greeley as well. Very slick there. Take a look at the other quad split here in town, in town rather. Uh, I-25, 104th, that's the southbound side. Uh, here's Highway 76 at the Commerce City split. 270 York, really slow traffic there. This is up in Broomfield, 120th and Main Street. And so slick conditions for us in most areas, unfortunately, this morning. You see the drive times heavier than normal on Highway 36, getting down to downtown Denver from the north side. I-70 is getting busier. So is the south side of town through the Denver Tech Center. Oh, over a half an hour now, all the way down to the DTC. So it's a busy drive with a lot of slick uh, roadways we're going to have to deal with. Well, Broncos country is waking up excited and already thinking about what could be <laughs> with the Russell Wilson coming to town now, looking pretty good in the orange and blue. Yeah, let's dive into the blockbuster trade with the Seattle Seahawks to get the nine-time Pro Bowler. The Broncos are sending quarterback Drew Locke, tight end Noah Fant, and defensive lineman Shelby Harris to Seattle. The team is also giving up multiple draft picks, including a first-round pick in the draft next month. A lot of fans say Couple. it's worth it, though. We have team coverage this morning, Denver 7 Broncos. Broncos insider Troy Rank breaks down what the move means for the Broncos future. We want to start with Jessica Crawford, who is live from Empower Field this morning with all the hype because fans are already looking for Russell Wilson jerseys. I'm out here at Empower Field where it is snowy and cold, but while temps are low, spirits are high. People are excited to try to get their hands on a Russell Wilson jersey, but it may be a while before they can do that. Uh, we reached out to some experts and they tell us that it could take weeks or even months for jersey manufacturers to prepare jerseys after a trade like this one is announced. We're told, however, that other things like t-shirts could be available much sooner. We stopped by sports fan here in Denver to speak with the owner about how he's working to get the apparel into stores. Plus, we're hearing from fans as well who cannot wait to get their hands on a Russell Wilson jersey in orange, blue and white. It's huge. You know, you never see anything like this in the NFL, occasionally in some of the other leagues, but nothing like this has occurred since probably the mid 80s with the Herschel Walker trade. So this is a massive, massive deal. Broncos come country has to be absolutely elated about it and super excited to get out as quickly as possible to get the jerseys and shirts and all those things when they start arriving in the stores. Uh, that's what I was doing today. I was looking around to see if they've already printed any Russell Wilson, you know, jerseys, but they haven't. So I'll have to wait a couple of weeks till they do. Hats, jerseys, <laughs> everything. Man, his wife could sell us something. We'll buy it, <laughs> you know, because she's popular and good.
All right, we lost uh, our connection there with Jessica. We'll get back to her later in the hour, though. Uh, meanwhile, the Broncos are getting a proven winner and leader out of Russell Wilson, as we mentioned, nine-time Pro Bowler and Super Bowl champion. Broncos insider Troy Rank is breaking down what the trade means for the Broncos this season. It was nothing short of a seismic shift out here at UC Health Training Center. After losing out on Aaron Rodgers, moments later, the Broncos acquire Russell Wilson in a blockbuster deal. And frankly, this changes everything. For the last six years, the Broncos have missed out on the playoffs. They've had five consecutive losing seasons. The one common denominator, underwhelming quarterback play. In the AFC West, it was like, which one of these is not like the other? They couldn't compete at the most important position in sports. But GM George Payton made it a priority. Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, those were the two plans. He lands Russell Wilson, who's a nine-time Pro Bowler. He's played his best on the biggest stage. He embraces competition. He will become the face of the franchise. And this now allows you to address multiple other needs in free agency and the draft, like outside linebacker, like defensive line, like tight end, and maybe even a right tackle. It sounds like a lot, it's not, because you finally solved the quarterback question for years to come. WrestleMania has arrived in Denver. For Denver 7, I'm Troy Rick. So this time yesterday, we were still talking about this guy, Aaron Rodgers, I think his name was, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we've already forgotten about him, and uh, don't feel too bad for Rodgers. He is now the highest paid NFL player of all time. He reportedly signed a $200 million extension to stay in Green Bay for four more years. To read our Broncos insider Troy Rank's full analysis on the Wilson trade, head to thedenverchannel.com. We do have some breaking news this morning. Ukrainian authorities say Russian forces have cut power to the Chernobyl nuclear site. Emergency generators are on, but Ukraine says that will only last for 48 hours and without consistent power, radioactive substances could be released. Uh, Ukraine is demanding a ceasefire to allow crews to make repairs. Also from overnight, lawmakers at our nation's capital have reached an agreement to keep the government funded. The House is expected to vote on the $1.5 trillion funding bill today. Current funding expires Friday, and the measure also includes $13.6 billion to help Ukraine and our European allies. Today, thousands of people continue to flee Ukrainian cities under a temporary Russian ceasefire. Ukrainian officials say Russia has agreed to six humanitarian corridors for refugees during the ceasefire. Already more than two million people have left the country. Poland had announced it was ready to transfer fighter jets to U.S. troops in Germany for them to then be given to Ukraine, but the Biden administration rejected that plan, worried it would further increase tensions with Russia. There are a lot of groups trying to help in Ukraine. Direct Relief is sending in medical supplies. We've sent the first several hundred of these medic packs that we've developed for rapid response um, in the in the U.S. really for all the emergencies that occur, and so that's what the was first sent. That's arrived this week. Um, that's what they wanted. Yeah, officials say the hardest thing is finding safe corridors to move supplies. Direct Relief takes donations, but they're also asking people to donate to nonprofits helping with food, water, shelter, and refugee resettlement. They recommend checking CharityNavigator.org before giving any money. United Airlines is getting involved by allowing its Mileage Plus members to donate miles or money. United is matching up to 5 million miles and up to $100,000 to four nonprofits. You can learn more on united.com slash Ukraine support. The U.S. decision to ban energy imports from Russia in the growing oil crisis appears to be opening up some new lines of communication with a former foe. Venezuela and the U.S. are talking once again in the diplomatic sense for the first time since 2019. The Venezuelan president, Nicolas Maduro, announced this week he's planning to increase crude oil output in the name of peace. In another diplomatic move, Venezuela released two U.S. citizens on Tuesday. Stefano Potsaban has more from Caracas. At least two U.S. citizens have been released from prison in Venezuela since Tuesday night, and just days after two top U.S. officials visited Caracas for the first time in years. One of them is Gustavo Cárdenas of the so-called group the Citgo Six, a group of uh, oil executives from the American corporation Citgo Petroleum 
The six men were detained in Caracas in 2017 on investment charges, which they deny, but their families and lawyers have often accused the Venezuelan government of using the group as pawns uh, to exert pressure onto the United States. A Cuban-American citizen, Jorge Alberto Fernandez, uh, who has spent more than a year in Venezuelan prisons uh, on terrorism-related charges, has also been released. And I think these releases really show the how widespread the consequences of the Russian invasion onto Ukraine have been all around the world. The diplomacy between Caracas and Washington is moving at the fastest rate it has been in years after the White House envoy Juan González personally met with uh, the Venezuelan strongman Nicolas Maduro at the presidential palace here in Caracas. The US are exploring the possibility of allowing oil exports from Venezuela to replace imports of Russian crude oil, which have been banned uh, by the White House on Tuesday. And they're trying to use this potential trade deal between uh, Washington and Caracas uh, as a wedge to distance uh, Nicolas Maduro from his close ally, Vladimir Putin. $124 million in fraudulent investments. How two con artists scammed investors out of cryptocurrency. Also, Boulder County is working to clean up debris from the Marshall Fire despite pushback from contractor companies. The steps they're taking to help people rebuild.